And welcome into this edition of ACAP Today for the week of May 23, 2022. I'm Jason Parent with Aroostook County Action Program. On this very special edition of ACAP Today, we're going to connect with some folks, some partners in the community who are working with us on a very special project that we're going to be launching on the very last day of Community Action Month, that's May 31st. Uh, we're going to talk about this special project, how it connects to Aroostook County's roots, agricultural roots, that is, and also how it's going to call attention to the challenges of food insecurity in our region, a challenge that ACAP and other community partners are very well aware of and work each day to help families and individuals in our communities uh, combat. So we're going to have that discussion in just a little bit with some guests from our partners at Northeast Packaging Company, as well as GB and D Pelletier Farms up in St. John. They're gonna join us remotely and we're gonna talk with them about this very special project, as well as our own Sherry Locke, who's gonna talk about the significance of what we're calling the 50th anniversary potato plot in just a little bit. But before we get to that feature interview, we're first going to turn to the news and the information that you can use for this, the week of May 23rd, 2022. And we are entering into this being the last full week of Community Action Month. So happy Community Action Month, everyone. Uh, it's been great connecting with folks throughout Aroostook County um, at some of our social events and some of our Connect to Purpose events where we're actually registering folks for services. Uh, we've already done the events in, of course, uh, Fort Kent, Madawaska, and last week we were in Caribou. Uh, this coming week, we're headed to Holton on the 25th. On Wednesday, we'll be at our 91 Military Street Holton location from two to four in the afternoon. We'll actually be there a little early Earlier in the day where we'll be connecting with services, but we'll be serving up ice cream from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, this Wednesday in Holton at our Military Street location. Please do join us uh, for all of this activity and what's to come. Look forward to our uh, June 1st. That's the Wednesday after this. Uh, June 1st will be our big birthday party at our 771 Main Street location. And of course, we invite folks from all over Rooster County to come for that. But we're looking forward to being in Holton this coming Wednesday. Also this week, our final two installations of Heap in Your Hometown. On Tuesday, we will be in Limestone, uh, where we'll be connecting with folks there who have not already uh, enrolled in the Home Energy Assistance Program and who would like an appointment uh, can do that right there on the spot. Just walk in at the town office there. Uh, no questions asked, no need for an appointment. And then on Wednesday, we will be in Ashland. So we're looking forward to connecting with our HEAT program folks in Ashland with our community members there. Again, if you haven't already registered for HEAP or signed up for the HEAT program this year or in a number of recent years, or ever for that matter, we encourage you to visit uh, those two locations, the town offices in Limestone and Ashland on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week uh, to get in to that program and begin your application process right on the spot. And speaking of the Home Energy Assistance Program, if you're wondering, gosh, do I qualify for this program? Well, this is the income eligibility guidelines, and you can look at it for one month, three months, or 12 months. So if you've had a change in your household income, and maybe you weren't uh, eligible in terms of looking back at your 12-month income for your household size, and things have shifted in the last month or even in the last three months, uh, you can potentially uh, be eligible for this program. So we encourage you to look at those income eligibility guidelines. They're available on our website as well. Uh, even if you fall close, we encourage you to connect with us and to apply for the Home Energy Assistance Program. It's worth a try. We can deduct some expenses like medical expenses uh, for your household um, and help uh, see if we can get you closer to being eligible for the program. And the cost of fuel right now, uh, this is an opportunity for many folks to be able to uh, connect and get some much needed assistance uh, and to help ease some of the pain um, that folks are paying to heat their homes. Even though we're heading into the summer months, this is actually the best time to apply for the Home Energy Assistance Program because any uh, vendor, fuel vendor account credit that will be credited to your fuel vendor's account uh, will be there until it runs out or for a period of 18 months. So we encourage you to please uh, consider applying for the Home Energy Assistance Program. We want to put a call out there to all youth in Aroostook County. If you're age 16 to 24 and are looking to advance to get into the workforce or are looking for a career opportunities connecting with higher education, our Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act program, our youth career counselors, 
are looking for you. We have about 20 open slots right now uh, to support youth across Aroostook County. So if you fall within this age category or know somebody or have someone in your household who does, contact us. You can reach us at the, the direct line to our workforce development team, 554-4137, uh, or you can email kwilliams at acap-me.org, or you can just call our main office at 764-3721 and ask to speak to workforce development. We also want to share with you some exciting news from ACAP's 5210 Let's Go program. We are introducing a new program to area workplaces that's available to workplaces called the Small Steps Program. This is where we're able to train employers on how to hold healthy meetings, celebrate a job well done using something other than food as the celebration, and to help staff be more active during the day while still getting their work done. So if you're interested in this program and having uh, someone go into your workplace, it's a free service that we provide through our 5210 Let's Go program. Renee Bragdon is the contact person for our agency. You can email her. The email address is there on your screen or give her a call. Her direct line is also there, but you can also call our main line and ask for Renee or for our 5210 Let's Go program. You can schedule a, a time for you to meet and just learn more about this program and see if it's something your uh, business might be considering uh, as, as something of interest to you. And we certainly would be happy to help with that to help improve your workplace wellness. We are also putting a call out there to the community, especially parents of children, very young children up to the age of five, to consider uh, putting in an application for our Head Start or our early Head Start programs. We currently offer services in Caribou, Dyer Brook, Fort Kent, Holton, and Presque Isle. And this fall, we will be beginning to offer we will be beginning to offer programs in Limestone through the public school there, as well as in Van Buren through their public school, SAD 24. So we're excited about these uh, expansion opportunities please give us a call at 554-4176 if you have a child age five and under, or uh, visit our early care and education page of the ACAP website to start the application process. And again, we're looking for youth across Aroostook County. Uh, it's a fantastic program um, and it really helps get your child ready for uh, school, for public school here in Aroostook County, giving them that great head start. We are also calling out to especially seniors in Aroostook County or those who have not filed income taxes with the state of Maine in this last year because perhaps your income didn't require you to file taxes. Uh, we want to help you access that $850 relief check uh, that folks across uh, the state of Maine have been allocating through the legislature and in a bill passed by the governor uh, with this year's uh, supplemental budget. Contact us at 764-3721 to schedule your appointment. Uh, we are scheduling folks. We did over 50 folks in Caribou last week alone at our open house there that day. We'll be doing some with folks in Holton at our open house this week. Uh, but we are scheduling appointments here, there, and everywhere in between and at locations and even over the phone. So please give us a call if you have not filed state of Maine income taxes so that we can help you with this uh, so that you can access that $850 relief check. Beyond that, many of, of the individuals and couples that were uh, helping to access these $850 relief checks are also finding that they're getting other tax benefits and other money coming back from the state. So it's oftentimes more than just the $850 per person relief check that's coming back to folks. And again, we're happy to help you with this. Please do consider connecting with us so we can offer this service to you. We are also uh, reminding folks that the Maine Home Assistance Fund program is now available. It's a gone live. It went live at the beginning of this month. It does provide up to $25,000 per eligible household. It's funded through the U.S. Department of Treasury and administered by the Maine Bureau of Consumer Credit Protection. ACAP is available locally to help people with their application online. We've had about 40 applications come in up until this point countywide. It's specifically for households or homeowners who are in distress at this point and have worked with their lenders and are finding it very difficult to be able to continue to pay their mortgage and in fact uh, are in, in perhaps some challenging situation with their financial institution as a result of that. Please give us a call at 764-3721 if we can help you fill out an application or answer any additional questions on this particular program. And if you're having trouble paying your electricity bills or utility bills and you rent, 
the main emergency rental program can cover the cost of electricity and other benefits. Just a note of caution on this one, the program is running short on funds and will be expiring, we anticipate, at some point later this year. And we are also awaiting word on some changes to the program that we're anticipating are going to come at about the beginning of June. So things are changing in this program. We're still taking current enrollment in this program, and we encourage you, if you're a renter out there and are having difficulty making ends meet and are not enrolled in this program, to consider giving us a call or going to mainrentrelief.com and beginning the application process there online. We are also reminding folks of an upcoming forum that's coming up uh, talking about pediatric vaccines for those six months to five years old and now that that's about to open up and what you can expect that's happening this Wednesday from 530 to 630 p.m. It's happening virtually and it's sponsored by a number of community partners whose logos you can see on the bottom of your screen there, including the main community action partnership. Uh, there will be uh, individuals. Uh, uh, physicians and, and others uh, who will be answering questions and who will be presenting on uh, discuss, discussions on making an informed decision about getting your young children vaccinated for COVID-19, against COVID-19. So if you would like to connect into this, uh, please visit mecap.org slash events to register, uh, and you can get the registration link uh, from that site. We encourage one and all to be there. I'll be moderating the discussion as I have some of the other conversations uh, hosted by MECAP in the past couple of years. And we're looking forward to being able to answer questions on what to expect as it relates to making an informed decision about getting young children vaccinated against COVID-19. And we're also speaking of COVID-19, reminding folks that COVID-19 levels in Maine remain high. In fact, more counties this week than this map indicates have been bumped up into the high category and Aroostook County is continuing to be among those. Aroostook County has had high transmission rates for the past several weeks. If you are in need of a vaccine or booster, you can go to the website listed there on your screen. You can also give us a call here at 764-3721 and we can help figure out where the best place for you to get a vaccine is closest to you. If transportation is an impediment for you, this Department of Health and Human Services continues to offer a free vaccine ride program. Call 1-855-608-5172 48 hours in advance to arrange for that ride. And brand new this week, a third round of free at-home COVID-19 test is now available. You can order up to two additional sets of four free at-home COVID-19 tests, so a total of eight tests can now come to you. Uh, we're encouraging you to order your test now. You can go to the website listed there or do it over the phone. Again, this is a third reset on this availability. Initially, there was a first round and a second round of four tests. Uh, now there's a third round and you can get up to eight tests sent to you direct to your household. And also a reminder that we're continuing to offer COVID community supports here through ACAP, where we can do grocery and meal deliveries to you, uh, help you in any way to stay sheltered and stay in your home uh, during a period where you need to uh, isolate or quarantine. Uh, please do give us a call or visit the Department of Health, of Health and Human Services website and register directly online to get a COVID social support uh, delivery to your household. We've been doing them across Arista County and we've seen an uptick as we've seen the uptick in uh, positive uh, cases across the county uh, in recent weeks. And again, please uh, don't uh, risk the health of others and stay uh, home and come uh, and give us a call related to this program so that we can provide those supports and get those to your doorstep. And lastly, if we've not talked about something in this edition of ACAP today and you are in need of any assistance, our ACAP navigators are available to help. You can give them a call at 764-3721. Give us a call and we'll connect you with them. Uh, this is funded in part through the CARES Act funding uh, from the very start of the pandemic. And again, we're happy to help connect you with services here in our agency or other services across Aroostook County uh, that are of need to you. And obviously, if you don't know where to turn, this is a great resource to get started. So we appreciate you um, connecting with us in this way and are happy to help in any way. And that's this week's news and information that you can use. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, we are pleased to be joined this week by individuals who are partnering with ACAP on a very exciting project. For those of you in Central Aroostook who might remember back in 2012, uh, during the uh, centennial of the then Aroostook Medical Center, there was a centennial potato plot that was planted uh, between Caribou and Presque Isle right there on Route 1 in a very visible spot. 
Well, in honor of ACAP's 50th anniversary, we're doing a very similar project, only our potato plot is going to be up in St. John, Maine, right there on Route 161 as you're traveling between St. Francis Allagash and um, all, all the way to Fort Kent. Um, so we're going up to the northern reaches of the county, and there's a specific reason why we're doing that. One of our uh, wonderful team members here at ACAP, our dental hygienist, Lucy Moore, and her, her family uh, owns a family farm up there in that region, and they are so generously donated uh, part of their potato plot uh, for this year uh, to growing uh, some potatoes, which we're going to talk about in just a minute, but I'm pleased, first of all, to introduce those guests. Sherry Locke is returning to the program to talk about the community connection component for ACAP. Sherry is ACAP's Director of Advancement. Sherry, welcome back to ACAP today. I know we've been tasking you a lot lately on this program, but there's so many exciting connections happening with our community, so we're so glad to have you back. Thank you for inviting me back. All right. And those farmers that I talked about um, are joining us as well. Uh, Anne Desjardins uh, and her dad, George Pelletier, are on screen here with us. Uh, they are the proprietors of GB and D Pelletier Farms, along with a couple of brothers. Uh, and they're excited about uh, this venture. And we're going to talk with them about that pro process in just a minute. So welcome, Anne and George. Thank you. All right. And then lastly, joining us on this broadcast, part of this project is really exciting in terms of how are we going to package these potatoes and get them out in the hands of folks and how we're going to do that is a very unique project as well. And that is a partnership with Northeast Packaging Company. And we are joined today by two representatives from that fine company just a little bit down the road from our facility here in Presque Isle. Uh, thank you, Grace Kinney and Dominic Bua for being on the program. We're glad to have you as well. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, so Sherry Locke, I'm going to begin with you by uh, sort of telling us a little bit about the ACAP 50th anniversary potato plot, why we're doing this, and what the significance of this project is for us. Absolutely. Thank you, Jason. As you mentioned, it is ACAP's 50th anniversary um, this year, so we are really excited and really wanted to celebrate this uh, milestone as an agency um, providing services to our community um, in a, a, a lot of different ways. And, and one of those ways was really finding that connect to purpose. As we know, Aroostook County is very much a farming community um, from the northern tip down to the southern tip of Aroostook County and all throughout. So we wanted to find a way to really connect to that purpose and to connect to our mission um, here at Arista County Action Program. So this project is a perfect way to do that. We will be able to invite the community, our community partners in, um, the students that go to our Head Start and Early Head Start programs, and um, to plant this potato plot um, to, to really signify our work in Arista County and the strong roots that we have here in Arista County. And it really connects very strongly to our strategic plan and to our mission um, food insecurity is on the rise here in Aroostook County and being able to provide uh, families with um, delicious locally grown potatoes at the end of the harvest is, is really checks off a lot of boxes for us and we know will help uh, many families uh, throughout the, the fall season. So really, really um, excited to do this project and to really connect again to the, the kind of the uh, agriculture community in this way and provide um, much needed food for those in our community. And as Sherry pointed out, the backbone of, of all of that work and all that we're doing is in fact family and GB and D Pelletier Farms is a wonderful family farm. Uh, Anne uh, and George, tell us a little bit about your family farm and, and its story, because its story is very much like the agricultural industry in Aroostook County. It's one of really perseverance and determination um, and the, uh, the, the coming together of a family to, to grow Aroostook County's most prolific and well-known crop, potatoes. Uh, you nailed it on the head there. Um, so my father here farmed pretty much all his life, right, Ed? Yeah. Um, he ended up losing his farm in the 80s. Yeah, 81. In 81. And um, from there, got multiple jobs in the woods for other farmers and such on. And um, in 93, my brother Dennis, he was a sophomore in high school. And he said, you know what? going to plant a few acres of potatoes here and that's what he did him and my dad and they uh, had a two-row planter yeah an old McCormick two-row planter and probably planted two to three acres you know just to dabble in it a little bit and as the years went by probably four or five years my oldest brother Bruce came back from Connecticut he was paving down that way and um he joined also and here we are in uh, 2022. I got two nephews, 
myself included, uh, my father and two brothers, and we're planting close to a thousand acres of potatoes, a uh, little over a thousand acres of grain. Yeah. And. Hmm. Very, very impressive. And, and it's really a sort of a phoenix rising from the ashes story. I mean, having, I'm sure Mr. Pelletier, it was very difficult um, oh, yeah. to sort of give up the farm for that period of time. But uh, looking at your family now and looking at where you've come, I know that it's a very challenging and difficult industry. Um, and it's, uh, you're obviously a very hardworking family. How proud are you of, of your family and in, in, in this effort? Uh, very, very good. They're, they're got a, blessed with that a good family. And yeah, they're all big workers. They're a very, very good family. And it's so nice that you're able to do this uh, together and to connect in this way. And 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 I think that our, our our sort of theme of family continues, and that's the work family at Northeast Packaging, uh, and a company that really uh, is committed to the, to the folks of Aroostook County, and really helps I think take off from the great work that our family farms and other farms across Aroostook County do, and that's the important component of helping to get some of those products out to market. Uh, in 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 the packaging work that they do so so Grace and Dominic let's let's start with you before we move on to the specifics of the project and tell us uh, for folks who maybe aren't in the agricultural industry or who aren't looking to buy potatoes to put in a grocery store the work that Northeast Packaging does because a lot of your work is sort of done within those sectors and within those industries but. And we don't necessarily think of it when we go in a grocery store and see a bag of potatoes, but oftentimes that bag that's there in the grocery store uh, was produced right here in Presque Isle or in Caribou at either one of those facilities uh, and has your stamp on it. Yeah, so we manufacture both paper and poly bags uh, right here in Presque Isle and also in our caribou plant. Um, I'd say about 90% of what we do is still for the potato industry itself. Um, but we do a lot of apple bags, citrus bags. Uh, we actually do a lot of rice bags for the rice industry in Louisiana. Um, but like I said, about 90% of what we do is for the potato industry. Um, obviously, taking care of the farmers here in Arusta County is still one of our key components to the company. Um, but we do ship as far west as California, Washington State, uh, Texas, up into North Dakota, uh, Wisconsin area down to Florida and all the way up the East Coast. Um, so most of the stores on the East Coast and around the country, you, you will see potato bags uh, that, that are produced right here at Northeast Packaging. It's, it's great. Uh, Grace, I know that that uh, work involves uh, a, a lot of components to it, which we're gonna talk about in just a little bit in terms of uh, through our project and what we're going to be doing with our project. but. Um, it's, uh, it, it sounds like creating um, bags for potatoes and other products that Dominic just talks about is something that's, that's done um, in sort of uh, in an industrial way, and it is, but uh, it also involves artistic components to it, and uh, each bag has to sort of uh, display the product and also sort of tell a story uh, and be appealing. So uh, what kind of work goes into that, the creative side of things uh, at Northeast Packaging? So we work with our customers on what design they want for their bag. And once they finalize their design, we then work with art companies to produce the plates for the bags. And once we order the plates and receive them in, they get mounted on the machine. And then from there, they're printed onto film and then wicketed into a bag. So our machines have the capability of printing up to eight colors, uh, process printed images. Um, it's come a long way. So it's, it's, it's a good thing. We, we're proud of the work we do here. Right, and, 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 it, and they are some great products. I mean, you go into any uh, grocery store and the odds are if you're seeing a potato bag, it was produced right here in Presque Isle. Um, so yes, yeah, so congratulations on, on, on all that, the diversity and the advancement in your company, just even the, the uh, several years since we've done the uh, TAMIC project, there's been a lot of uh, investment and expansion and growth with Northeast Packaging. Mm -hmm. um, to Pelletier Farms now, we're gonna take just a moment to, to look at the field because I was up visiting uh, with 
uh, with George and Ann, uh, and along with Sherry, uh, at the uh, end of April. And we actually got to see the field on Route 161. So we're going to share with you a picture. Again, uh, this was taken in late April uh, before planting season, and you can still see some snow there along the tree line and in the hill beyond it. But this is the the uh, field uh, in uh, St. John um, that we're going to be planting, actually that the, the family has already planted. Um, and we're going to be doing a ceremonial planting with uh, some of our Head Start children that attend uh, programs in Fort Kent and representatives from Northeast Packaging, um, as well as the family uh, on May 31st. So tell us about this year's planting season, um, Ann and George. Uh, I know that you're in the midst of it right now. Thank you for taking a break to come in and speak with us. But talk about how planting is going overall and how the planting of this field is and what kind of potatoes we're going to be uh, featuring in this year's uh, field. Uh, this field was planted May 11, May 11 and it's going to have dark red New Orleans. Um, planting's going really well. We probably have close to 400 in the ground, Dad. Yeah, oh yeah. 400 yeah. acres in the ground. So that's really exciting. Um, it's an early planting season this year, usually around the 18th of May. So we're we're a week a week ahead of schedule. And we're looking at just, you know, going as we go through the season here, we're looking at part of this project, which I think is really exciting and involving the community, is we're looking to hand harvest this field, similar to what we what was happening with the Tamic uh, Centennial Potato Plot, uh, and invite the community in. We're, we're estimating and looking at about around September 16th uh, during Fort Kent Scarecrow Festival uh, to sort of bring some additional excitement to this particular project. Um, so, uh, the significance of this. I know that when we, when I approached Lucy and then Lucy approached you, uh, what were your thoughts, Anne and George, about uh, this project and about growing potatoes and connecting to sort of the purpose of, of the project that we're doing? First off, I think it's amazing to get kids involved in agriculture. There's just not enough of it in this community as well, especially in the Valley area. We got no FFA, we got, so I feel that kids are, they don't know much about agriculture and planting and where food comes from, you know? So I think that you guys doing this and connecting and giving it to the food pantries to, to help feed the county is just an amazing project. George, um, this really uh, is, is, is what farmers do. Farmers feed people. Um, and, yeah. and I think that we all kind of, kind of take for granted sometimes when we go into a grocery store and see the wonderful packaging, the potatoes are in through Northeast Packaging, how that whole product starts. And you know it from the ground up. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people think that comes from the store. <laughs> you know what, uh, there's a big uh, project, it's a big project. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta work and put the, a lot of, you need education now to, uh, my boys are, I heard they're educated pretty much. So uh, if that's what you need to be farming now because this is, there's a lot to it. You gotta keep uh, account of everything and uh, it's, it's a big job. We need, yeah, all, we need all the family, the family is all, and we, we all work uh, at, at doing good. <laughs> we, each, we each have our separate uh, parts of the farm. Yeah. We each have our job, you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not unlike what Dominic and Grace were talking about in terms of a technology. I mean, the technology in their industry has just exploded, but it has uh, in farming as well. So you're really, you're, you're you're growing a crop, but you're also running a, a, a business. You're running a significant size business and you're yeah. keep trying to keep up with technology to ensure that you get your maximum yield. So you, you are certainly have your hands full. Yes, we uh, do. Yeah. Sherry Locke, talk about as we get through this project, help, help un us understand the timeline. We talked a little bit about the event on the 31st, maybe go a little bit deeper into that. And then what happens from there? And we'll bring in our friends from Northeast Packaging to talk about their part of this project. Yes, absolutely. So we are going to be launching um, the bag design contest. So we're asking members of the community um, to design a bag, a bag that reflects um, the history of agriculture in Aroostook County, that may highlight um, ACAP's 50, 50 years of serving Aroostook County and what it means to work together as a community to make sure that the needs are met for, for everyone that lives in our community. So we're going to be launching that on May 31st. We'll be having those rules and um, you know the size and the color requirements out on our website. And we're really encouraging folks to do that. We really are expecting to see 
lots of creativity and lots of uh, commitment and passion for the community is what we expect to see in those bags. We will um, have a small committee um, that will help us uh, make, decide on the winner. Um, and we, we will be making that announcement on uh, July 16th at the Potato Blossom Festival um, in Fort Fairfield, be announcing that winner. And then we will work with our friends to get that design that you know the winning design on all of those bags so really it's going to be a, a great project and you know have so many different folks involved um, including the creativity of Riverside County we've seen so much creativity in our county and to have that displayed on the potato bag will really make it special and that's really a uh, grace and dominic where northeast packaging sort of takes over talk about that process and what happens uh, once we've selected a uh, a winner of the of the bag design contest what happens then? So once the winner of the bag design contest is selected, uh, that artwork will be given to us. And again, our art department will um, hand this off to our plate making company, which um, would then get this ready to have the, the artwork put on plates, which is um, then put on the put onto the machines to have the bags printed and converted and made into the final product to be packaged. Awesome. And so what does that whole like period of time look like from uh, getting a design in-house to getting an actual printed product um, ready to go? So typically from when we get <clears throat> final artwork from our customers, um, it's anywhere from one to two weeks typically to get the plates approved by the customer and um, then get the plate sent out to us here. From that time frame, it's uh, typically, depending on the time of year it is, obviously the holiday seasons get a lot busier um, as obviously more potatoes are being sold during the holiday seasons. Um, but typically it's a two to three week period for us to get bags made and out to the customer. That's awesome. Um, quick, quick turnaround. Um, so Sherry, uh, we're looking at uh, a contest that's going to run through probably late June, very early July, and then uh, an exciting announcement at the Potato Blossom Festival of the winner of the bag design contest. That's exactly right. So we want folks to be thinking about their ideas. And again, we'll have those guidelines available. And um, again, have that artwork into us so we can make that selection in July, make that big announcement. Um, so that the bags have time to be produced so that we can then um, work on the farm to uh, pick those potatoes and put them in those beautiful bags. So um, it really is going to be a great community project um, and really excited for that to all come together over these summer months. And really happy to know that you already have our, our special potatoes in the ground. And, and Sherry, also to that point, it's, um, it, it's, it's like ACAP services. It's open to people of all ages, that design contest, all ages across Aroostook County, correct? That's absolutely correct. And we're really excited to see what you know some of our youngest artists may come up with. And we, you know, we have some folks who have been doing art their whole life and what they may come up with on a bag. Um, we will be displaying lots of those. We will be displaying all of those entries, not just the winner. Um, the winner, but then will be placed on that bag and shared across the nation. And we're really excited. Um, Jason, do you want to share about? I, I think I'll let you go right ahead and make that great announcement that we've, what we've been uh, successful in securing. I know I've told the Pelletier family, and I believe we've told our friends at Northeast Packaging. Yes. So we, um, Senator Collins has agreed to take um, one of our bags um, to the White House chef. So we're really excited that not only will these bags of potatoes feed folks here in Aroostook County um, through the pantry system, but that we will be able to um, show the fantastic bags and the artwork as well as the delicious potatoes at our nation's capital. So really exciting. So uh, George, did you ever imagine that uh, in your potato farming years that you would actually have potatoes served at the White House? <laughs> we'll let you on mute. <laughs> there we go. Oops. Oh, no, you muted again. <laughs> there. Oops. Quick, there, go. Oh, ah. no. there we go. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> George, I can hear you now. Okay. I'd like to uh, speak to Dominic a minute there. Yes. Yes, I mean, you're going to have the plate for the bags there, a plate uh, for our GBND. Uh, 
He's asking. It'll have the artwork on it, Dad. Yeah, from I know, the but kids. The, just, just the plate. You need that. You uh, you're gonna have the GBD plate, huh? GBD logo. He's logo. asking. Yeah, we have. Said, I, I'd like I'd like just some, some bags, man. Uh, I still, I got a road stand. I could uh, use some bags. Uh, GBD to just for for uh, G, GBD. If I could have some made later. Yes, we can do that. There you go. We're doing uh, business right here on ATAP today. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, George. He's always thinking business. That's why, he, that's why he's successful. George, yes. are you, um, George, are you excited about the fact that your, your potatoes, the potatoes grown in the field right outside your home are going to be headed uh, to Washington, D.C.? Yeah, that's quite a thing. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> That is. Uh, yeah. And um, talk about uh, the, we talked about the process from Grace and Dominic's perspective from the development of the bags. Talk about, I mean, the, potato, the potatoes are in the ground uh, on, on your end. Um, and so what are you looking at for growing season and what are we hoping for, for, for ideal weather? Uh, a little bit more rain than we've had in the past couple summers. <laughs> That's for sure. That would help out quite a bit. Um, yeah, just weather. We oh, depend yeah. on we we depend on Mother Nature. <laughs> That's what farmers do. Indeed. Well, we'll look forward to watching the potatoes go through their growth cycle and seeing them bloom uh, in July and uh, and and yep. getting ready for harvest this fall. Really excited about that. Really excited about this project. So, Anne and George, anything else that we haven't talked about that you want to make sure that you share with folks about this project? I think you got it covered, Jason. Uh, pretty much. All right. right. Grace and Dominic from Northeast Packaging's perspective, are you excited to be a partner in this project and anything else you wanna share? Yeah, so we were very happy to be a part of this process. And just one more thing that when designing the bag, um, since it'll be on a paper bag, it will have to be four colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have that in the rules. We're gonna be putting out the rules. We're gonna be launching a web page. Uh, where people can see the rules and make their submissions and that's one of the parameters for it. I think we're also looking at designs not we have a dimension area as well for designs based upon the information uh, that you folks have provided us so uh, looking forward to that looking forward to connecting with all of you uh, on May 31st uh, in the field I'll bring it back up on the screen here uh, in this field uh, on Route 161 between uh, Fort Kent and St. Francis up in St. John. It's going to be a great time. We're going to unveil a sign on the side of the road that will have the uh, Northeast Packaging ACAP and GB and D Pelletier logos on it. And we'll have some young children there um, that will be ready to play in the dirt uh, and ceremonially plant some potatoes at the base of the sign uh, on May 31st. We're going to be there at 10 o'clock in the morning at GB and D Pelletier Farm. So if folks would like to come out and uh, celebrate with us, take pictures, uh, feel free to do that. Um, but we're looking forward to that day. And uh, as Anne pointed out, we're looking forward to good weather on that day because good weather on that day would be so also oh, helpful, right, Sherry Locke? Absolutely, absolutely. And just want to take this opportunity to thank our partners for this project. This is We know this is a big commitment. We know this is something that you do um, each and every day and that you're experts in your areas. But we just want to thank you for allowing ACAP to be part of this. Um, really want to invite the community to be part of this project. So whether you're artistic or want to spend a day helping us harvest in the dirt um, to please be part of this project, because again, these potatoes are going to feed many, many families here in Aroostook County. Um, and as we know, you know, many hands make light work. But again, thank you to our partners for um, allowing us to be part of the work that you do here in Aroostook County. Indeed. Thank you both. Uh, thank you all four of you. Thank you both organizations and entities. Uh, for uh, this great partnership and the opportunity to, I think, draw attention to several things, uh, the importance of the Aroostook County agricultural industry, also the importance of manufacturing in our community, because I think that folks don't uh, necessarily see that as much as they drive by and see potato fields across Aroostook County. I think more people understand that significance, but the work that's done by Northeast Packaging and other uh, manufacturers here in Aroostook County uh, to get product to market is, uh, is very impressive and something we want to draw attention to. And of course, the uh, much of the work that we do here at the agency and have done for 50 years. Um, and I think it's very appropriate as well 
that our potato plot is up in the St. John Valley because the reason why we're celebrating 50 years this year is that it was 50 years ago that this agency, the Central Aroostook Community Action Agency and the St. John Valley Community Action Council merged. Uh, so our roots are truly across Aroostook County and it's uh, great to demonstrate that we are a countywide organization with employees like Anne's sister and George's daughter, uh, Lucy, that are our team members across Aroostook County. So I wanted to bring that message home as well. Uh, so thank you to our guests. Uh, thank you both for your participation in this project and for your participation in today's recording of ACAP Today. Uh, before we leave all of you out there, as we do at each point in this broadcast, we want to bring you a snapshot of the week uh, from ACAP. And all this year, we've been bringing you our historic throwback snapshots of the week. And this week, we're taking a trip back to uh, 1986. Uh, and in 1986, the very first uh, youth uh, conference, the teen conference was held. This is in the gymnasium at the University of Maine at Presque Isle. Uh, you can see the wooden folding chairs there that I don't believe that they have anymore. Uh, and a packed house where teens from all across Aroostook County came together for the 1986 uh, teen conference. Part of ACAP's work, again, throughout the past five decades here in Aroostook County, and a real reminder of how we're connecting with youth across Aroostook County through our continual teen programs uh, that we offer countywide. Uh, so that's this week's snapshot of the week. Hopefully, if you were a teen at that conference, you can spot yourself in that crowd there. Uh, but uh, thank you all for joining us on this week's edition of ACAP Today. Again, a special thank you to our guests. We'll be back next week with another edition of ACAP Today. Until then, have a great week, everyone.